Intel Arc's A380 desktop graphics card in its first reviews and apparently it's extremely disappointing. This is coming from WCCF Tech. It loses to the 6400 from Radeon and the GTX 1650 in gaming benchmarks. The first reviews of Intel's Arc A380 graphics card are in and it looks like Chipzilla's first discrete desktop GPU is turning out to be a disappointment. The Intel Arc graphics cards were launched at the end of Q1 2022 for the mobility segment and even by the end of Q2 of 2022. Intel still doesn't seem to have drivers ready for its Arc Alchemist GPU lineup, which is the main reason why the latest entry is failing to deliver any decent performance numbers in gaming. The review comes from Billaby Content Maker. Um, this one, Shen Medung, I can't, I don't, I, I give up on that, but... Shen, we'll call him Shen, who was the first to post the test results for the Intel Arc A380 graphics card in both synthetic and gaming workloads. The GPU was used, uh, used is the Gunair Arc A380 6 gigabyte photon, which was launched recently for a price of 1,099 RMB, but has been listed at retail outlets for 1,499 RMB instead. We also saw some pre-order listings of the card at above 500 US dollars. That is insane pricing for this GPU in my humble opinion. Coming to the specifications, the Intel Arc A380 graphics card will be an entry level design featuring the full ACM G11 GPU that utilizes the Arc Alchemist XE HPG architecture. It houses the full GPU configuration, making use of eight XE cores or 1,024 ALUs. The graphics card also features six gigabytes of GDDR6 memory running at 15.5 gigabits per second for a 186 gigabytes a second of total bandwidth. That won't be fantastic for mining. That's pretty low. The total board power is rated at around 75 watts. That's good. The maximum frequency for the card is rated at 2000 megahertz, which shows that Intel is taking full advantage of TSMC's six nanometer process node. The Gunair custom model features a clock speed of up to 2450 megahertz and has a total board power of 92 watts. Not as good, right? As for the performance in synthetic workloads, the Intel Arc A380 graphics card was able to be close to the competition, which includes the 6400 and the 1650. So you could expect mining performance to be around these two and for the price, not too good, right? Maybe a little bit above that. Um, well, possibly just because I think it has a little bit more memory bandwidth, but yeah. In Port Royal, the Arc A380 graphics card was almost twice as fast as the AMD RDNA 2 GPUs. The 6400 and 6500 XT, but lost to the RTX 3050, which was more than three times as fast. And so you have some of the benchmarks here. Um, it, 3D Mark Fire Strike, for example, the 1650 is right here. The A380 does beat that out, but doesn't beat out the 6400. And then we have the Time Spy, where we do see the A380 beating out the 6500 XT, but losing to the 3050. So Time Spy, as far as that goes, looks pretty good. And then Port Royal, it looks pretty good as well as far as where it's competing with. So for gaming, a range of DX11 and DX12 and Vulcan titles were used, such as League of Legends, GTA 5, PUBG, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, for Forza Horizon 5, and Red Dead Redemption 2. In all tests, the Intel Arc A380 graphics card not only ended up slower than the RX 6400, but also the GeForce 1650 which is years old now. And so you can see kind of the, the performances here with the blue being the A380. And, you know, it's not quite there. Intel had specifically targeted the AMD RX 6400 in its press release for the Arc A380, where it stated that the new card will offer 25% better performance per one when it launches in Chinese markets. But that doesn't seem to be the case at all. Sure, the Intel Arc A380 has some cool tricks up its sleeve, such as hardware accelerated ray tracing, which is at this level, you know, non-existent on the competing models, hardware assisted AI upsampling, which is one of the new technologies that we're still keeping an eye on for with XESS and AV1 encoding and decoding and better content creation capabilities. But at the end of the day, it is a gaming card that fails to deliver any decent gaming numbers. 
The hardware configuration consisted of the Alder Lake i5-12400 CPU and a B660 board with DDR4 memory for all of the GPU tests, so that isn't the problem. Intel recently made it a requirement to enable resizable bar for optimal performance on ARC graphics cards, plus it isn't known if DTT was disabled for these tests. But with every test showcasing similar numbers, we can come to the conclusion that Intel's drivers are a major wreck fest and they really need to fix them fast if they want people to consider the ARC as a viable competitor in the GPU segment. Now, a couple de defense points here that, that I want to point out, <laughs> defense points that I want to point out, all right, is that we are seeing in synthetic benchmarks pretty okay numbers, right? So it's winning, it's winning, it loses on fire strike, so traditional rasterization. If, you know, the DTT was disabled for this, this would make sense as far as this goes, right? And it would make sense that in the higher resolutions, right? So Time Spy being 1440p and uh, Port Royal being, I believe, 4K, if I recall correctly, um, you would see uh, essentially the memory bandwidth kind of help out there as well. So there is still some potential here in general. I just don't see a ton of it. We'll have to wait for the drivers as far as gaming goes. But there is a little bit of potential still with Intel and mining performance in general. Obviously, the price point right now is terrible. But that could be because there's not an actual official Western launch. So when the Western launch happens, then we'll have a better idea. Right now, if you're trying to get one for testing, that sort of thing, you're having to go through tariffs. You're having to find somebody, you know, usually like in China that's going to sell it to you and that's going to drive the price up. And there's all that sort of like, all that sort of nuance surrounding getting these cards right now. And so just keep that in mind. I don't think that $500 is going to be what it launches at for the A380. That's just some listings that you could get it, basically get it early, right? Get an early adopter thing. Maybe you're a YouTuber in the US that wants to review it before anybody else. So you're gonna pay that $500 so you can get the clicks, that sort of thing, right? I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.